get back here. Get, hold still. You're not getting away from this. You're gonna get hot. Hold still. Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. Today I'm going to talk about filing buttons. This is an old school technique, very old in fact, for rounding the corners and ends on things quite accurately with very simple tools. All you need is a lathe and a torch. And you can round corners or ends on any part. And I'll show you right now. Let's say for the sake of argument, I've got this small part from a locomotive project that eh, someone might hypothetically be building. The corners of it need to be rounded around those bolt holes there. The fanciest way to do this would be on a rotary table. And longtime viewers may know that I've built this fixture here. This is my end and corner rounding fixture, which consists of a series of interchangeable pins that go in the rotary table for doing just such a job. However, as you can see, this really only works very well on larger parts. Something as small as this coupler pocket is really too difficult to fixture on something like a rotary table. And it's a lot of work to set up the rotary table for something like this. So in a situation like this where you've got a very small part that has rounded features on it that are very small and they're mainly cosmetic, there's no mechanism that's depending on the radius of that curve being perfect or in the exact perfect location, filing buttons are really the ticket here. In a nutshell, filing buttons are hardened steel pins that act as file guides. They center themselves on the hole in question. So the first step is to figure out exactly how big that hole is. Of course, I drilled these holes, so I know roughly how big they are, but drills can cut over size, so I'm using gauge pins to make sure. The more accurately the file buttons fit, the better the results of this operation will be. To make the buttons, we have to use tool steel because they are going to be hardened. I've got some O1 tool steel here in the form of drill rod. The radius of the material needs to be the radius of the curve that you're trying to create. I happen to have some drill rod the exact right size, but if you don't, you can simply turn it to diameter, of course. Next, we need a way to attach the filing buttons to the piece. If the buttons are large enough, you can use a fixturing bolt that goes through them. However, the example I've got here is a very, very small hole. I've got a tiny number two bolt here. It's a little bit too large. There needs to be enough material around the bolt to hold the buttons securely inside the hole. So another way to do it is to simply clamp them in place. In this case, it's helpful to make the buttons extra long so that there's room for the clamp around the piece and room for the file between the clamp jaws because we're going to need plenty of access all the way around the pins for filing. This looks like it'll fit, so I'm going to take a measurement off the clamps and that tells me how long to make my pins. I'll lop off a more manageable chunk of this tool steel. When cutting round stock on the bandsaw, I always put a small clamp on the material to keep the saw blade from grabbing it and rolling it over. Cutting round stock on a bandsaw is actually a little bit dangerous because it can roll over and pull your finger underneath, which would be quite painful, I'm sure, if that were to happen. So a little clamp on there prevents that. I'm going to do this in my collet chuck because I happen to have a collet that's the right diameter for these particular filing buttons. Using my parting blade as a guide. I'm leaving just enough stock sticking out so that I have the correct length for one of the buttons and still have room for the parting blade. Tighten that down right there and we're ready to go. Start by facing off the end as is tradition. Next I'll turn down a shoulder area at the end. This needs to be long enough to go through the stock and have a little bit left over at the other end to register the other button. The diameter I'm aiming for is a very, very close sliding fit on the hole in the part that I want to round the corner of. Again, the closer this fit is, the more accurate the final feature created with the filing buttons will be. So I'm taking my time and sneaking up on this dimension, trying to hit that gauge pin number that we determined earlier. On my finishing cut, I go all the way down to the root of the shoulder, and then I take a light facing cut on the shoulder to face that nice and square quick deburr on the end of that part with a file to make sure that it's not going to interfere with my test fit. And let's see how we're doing on fit. I should be right on by the micrometer, but let's make sure. And survey says, oh, it's really close. Like it starts to go, but won't quite go all the way through. It's probably just a hint of taper either in the pin or on that hole. So I think just a little bit of emery will take care of it. It's so close that you could probably force it through being brass, but obviously I don't want to do that. Now we're talking. That's a very close sliding fit. 
slides on, but there's no play or wiggle in that at all. And it fits on both sides as well. So looking good. There's just one slight fitment issue that I'd like to correct. You'll see when it slides on, there's a little bit of a gap before the shoulder there. Now, technically this doesn't actually matter because it's a filing button, but you know, we can fix it, so why not? The reason that that kind of fitment error happens is because whenever you turn a shoulder, there's always a fillet on that inside corner created by the nose radius of the turning tool. There's no such thing as a zero nose radius turning tool, so you always have a little bit of a fillet in there. I go in there with a sharp nose tool and I just whittle away that little fillet, create a little bit of an undercut, and now it's a perfect fit, snug right up to the shoulder. That's what I wanted. Lathe work is done for the first of the buttons, so I'm ready to part it off now. I'll move down the appropriate amount with my parting blade, and away we go. And Yahtzee! Next I pull that stock out, just enough to do the second of the two buttons. Once again I face off the end, as is tradition. This is the female button, so it does not need a shouldered pin on the end of it. This, however, needs a hole to receive the pin from the other button. For that I'm simply going to center drill and drill the center of this button using the same drill that was used to drill the hole in the part that I'd like to round the corners of. It's worth noting that there are other ways to attach filing buttons. You could, for example, create a threaded pin on one of the buttons that threads into the other pin. However, this being tool steel and a very, very small hole, I wasn't confident in my ability to thread a hole this small without breaking a tap because it's tool steel. However, for larger filing buttons, I think that would be a perfectly reasonable way to do it. Although for larger filing buttons, you can also just feed a bolt through the center of both of them and that works just fine. Once again, aiming for a very close fit, and the closer this fit is, the more accurate the final feature will be. Now it looks like the drill cut exactly on size. I was actually counting on it cutting half a thou or a thou oversized so that the pin would fit in there, but it didn't. So sometimes you can just run the drill in and out again, and that'll scrape it out inside just enough to where it'll fit, but nope, still no good. So here's a dirty little trick. When you just need to shave like a tenth or two off the inside of a hole, just run the drill in there again and put a little lateral force on that drill with your finger. Run that in and out, and that'll shave just a little bit off of that hole. And now, perfect fit. That's all it needed. One more time, because a good fitment never gets old. Oh, look at that. That right there is why I love machining. I just never get tired of things that fit perfectly together. Simmer down, I know what you're thinking. Jeez. The reason for that side pressure drill trick, by the way, is because the next drill size up is two thou larger in this case, which would have been way too much. The pin would have been too sloppy after that. So part that guy off. And now it's time for the heat treating. These pins need to be hard because you want them to be harder than the file, otherwise the file is going to wear them away. This is very easy to do. As heat treating goes, this is the easiest case that you can possibly imagine. All you got to do is put it on a brick and heat it up until it turns bright orange or cherry red or whatever you want to call that color. And I like to hold it here for several seconds to make sure it gets thoroughly heated through. So you can see me feathering a torch on and off of the part to just hold it at that same kind of orange color for several seconds and then dunk it in oil. This is O1 tool steel, which is an oil hardening steel, so it gets quenched in oil. There are also water and air hardening steels, but the O1 is what I have. Doesn't matter what kind of oil you use. I've used motor oil. These days I use canola oil because it makes the shop smell like french fries and it's non-toxic. The other one is done similarly, but you'll notice I'm heating it from the thick end because that tiny little pin on the end could very easily become overheated from this. So focusing my heat on the fat end and letting the heat propagate up is the safest way to do it in this case. Once again, hold that heat for a few seconds and then quench. Of course, they come out of the quench all charred, so it takes a little bit of elbow grease with some emery paper or scotch Bright to clean them up again. Next, it's important to check the dimensions because when you heat treat parts, they can change size. That's one of the frustrating parts of heat treating. 
However, in this case, I got lucky and everything is still a perfect fit. If that pin had gotten a little bit larger, for example, then I'd have to put it in the lathe and sand it down a little bit to bring it back to dimension. Looks like it's still a perfect fit on my parts as well, so that's looking really, really good. If you're familiar with heat treating, you might have noticed I did not temper these parts. For filing buttons, it's really not necessary. In fact, I think it's desirable not to, because you want them to be extremely hard, harder than your files, and the brittleness of untempered hardened steel is not an issue here because there's no real forces on these buttons. I've got a little test piece here that I'll demonstrate the buttons on. I'll show you why I'm not demonstrating on the real part in a moment. This little test piece will give you a better idea of how these buttons are supposed to work. Fit them on there and then I'll clamp them in place. And I've got my vise turned sideways so that I can clamp the toolmaker's clamp in there and it'll be at a convenient angle for my body to stand and do the filing. Now comes the easy part. We just file to our heart's content. You really can't screw up from this point on because the filing buttons will physically prevent the file from cutting anywhere that it isn't supposed to. That's really the joy of this method. You can tell when you've reached the filing buttons because the file will start skating quite noticeably. It'll get very, very slippery and you can feel that it isn't cutting the brass anymore. This whole process is really quite satisfying, actually. Filing buttons are kind of fun to use. You do have to, of course, make a set of them for every combination of hole diameter and corner radius that you might ever want to do. That's the obvious downside to filing buttons. You have to make a lot of them. This set that I've made here only works in this exact scenario. The upside to filing buttons, though, as I said at the top of the show, is that on really small parts like this, they do actually quite an excellent job. The end result is really a very nice corner or end rounding. It's not, you know, micron perfect or anything, but for handwork, that's about as good as you're going to do, I think. It's hard to beat that. The other cool thing about filing buttons is because they're so hard, they're entirely undamaged by this process, so you can use them over and over and over again. You can put them in a drawer of filing buttons that you've created for every purpose, and they will basically last forever. A reasonable question might be then, if they are so hard, aren't they going to dull your files? I suppose in principle they could, but you're really not getting into them that much. As soon as you feel the file touching them, you stop. And unless you were using them aggressively dozens and dozens of times a day, I really don't think they would wear out your files. And again, like I said at the top of the show, this technique is 100 years old, and if it was bad for your files, machinists who came along before you and I were born wouldn't still be doing it. On now to the actual part that I wanted to do. This is a good chance to show you how filing buttons can sometimes not work perfectly, and this is a perfect example of that. Filing buttons depend on the hole that you drilled being very accurately distanced from the adjacent features. So if you want to create a perfect corner radius of a given radius, the hole needs to be exactly that distance from the two edges that form the tangents of that radius, just like a corner rounding fixture on a rotary table. Same issue there. In the case of this part, the hole is not the perfect distance from the tangent features on either side of the radius. So the pins do still work, but the end result isn't quite as nice. You can still create a radius that's the same as the pins, of course, but if that radius isn't the exact correct distance from the reference hole, then it's a little bit more of a messier curve that you might have to blend in a little bit with some hand filing. But it's still an aesthetically pleasing result. There you go, that's a quick intro to filing buttons. This is a very old school technique that I thought deserved a little better coverage on YouTube than it has gotten. It's still extremely relevant and useful to this day. Well, thank you very much for watching, and thanks especially to my awesome patrons who make all of this content possible. You guys are making it happen every single week, and I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.